guys welcome back to the channel I haven't done this in a little bit so I figure I'll give you guys a channel update and stash ads and just what uh, what I'm up to as you know I just finished off the uh, Fiero triple build so I'm looking into what I'm gonna do next so I figured uh, in between builds I have got taken on this little project here this is a Star Wars Transformers uh, I guess crossover toy and the robot transformation part of it just kind of really sucks so I did like the spaceship part so um, I figured uh, I'm just gonna leave it in its spaceship mode but when I was looking at it the detailing just wasn't there uh, it's got some good engraving and all that but it just had no weathering nothing so I decided I'm gonna weather it up and uh, I guess make a painting exercise out of it and as you can see, I'm about halfway done. There's uh, quite a bit of weathering added to it. You can see here what it looks like unweathered and what it looks like weathered. You know, using panel liner, different colors of panel lining. And here you can see a good example of what the de detailing and panel lining and weathering compared to the other side which has only been panel lined but not weathered so this is just a fun little exercise also did the landing struts have also been metalized and painted up so this will be on the channel when it's done uh, just something to play with in between builds so let me show you guys what some stash ads that picked up recently uh, which are gonna be on the channel at some point first one is our 71 boss mustang i was really looking forward to this one all new tooling i've seen a lot of guys review it uh on their channels and i'm really looking forward to diving into this looks to be a really cool kit it does say all new tooling so i'm hoping that it really is all new and not just a refreshed older kit but looking at that it looks like it's really gonna build up nice the stance really looks correct on this car here. On the carriage detailing looks good. Engine compartment interior looks really nice. So uh, really looking forward to this. There are quite a few 71 uh, Mustangs out there. So I may pick up another one and do a double take episode out of it just to compare the two. So that's uh, the first thing we're going to look at. Now here comes our next add to the stash the Lancia Stratos let me see if I can pull back a little bit there we go this is very cool this is one of my favorite cars of all time I didn't even know this kit existed but uh, then I saw a channel where they were building it I don't remember what the channel was but they mentioned it was a Hasegawa kit so I went online and I found it now that is cool that's going to build up very nice. So I'm really looking forward to working on that one. Okay, let's keep this moving along. The next add to the stash. I have been looking for this for a very, very long time. I think this is a re-release of the original Aoshima kit. Season 1 kit with lights and sound. I did build the MPC uh Knight Rider kit and added some lights to it and that kit left a little bit to be desired but once you put enough work into it like a lot of NPC kits the building them straight up not quite you know what you would like them to be but put a little work into it and sort out the uh, issues they have and they make some really good display models so this is by Aoshima it comes with as you can see here that little control box there for the lights and the sound. It's got a board uh, with the LEDs in it. It's gonna, this is gonna build up really, really nice. This is a little bit larger scale. I think this is 1 20th scale, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see it here. Oh, one, no, it is 1 24th scale. Oh, I thought it was a 1 20th scale kit. This may, okay, this may be a new kit from Aoshima. I did see that it was recently released from Big Bad Toy Store, I think is where I got it. 
uh, straight out of Japan. I had to grab it as soon as I heard about it. Because, you know me, I love me some Knight Rider. All right, guys, let's keep it going here. Here, a buddy of mine at work knows I'm a Battlestar Galactica fan. So he got me a Colonial Viper Mark II kit. Now, this is a previously built kit. Or previously, someone was working on it at some point. As someone had already started some of the assembly. And uh, at first, I was going to build it as a Battle Damage Viper. But... Uh, I may not do that because I do have another Colonial Viper Mark II kit, which I'm going to build at some point. But this, I may be pulling parts from this for a kit bashing project that uh, I'm in the planning stages of right now. Uh, in which case, I can use the interior, the pilot, the cockpit, just uh, a few bits and pieces from this on that uh, on that kit bash that I'm working on. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's going to be something that we'll be working on in the near future. Okay, now here's something that I have really been waiting for. The Green Hornet Black Beauty. We're going to be doing an unboxing of this on the channel. This is a kit that I've been waiting for for a very long time. Ever since I built the uh, Polar Lights 135th scale Black Beauty, which that kit left a lot to be desired. This kit has corrected a lot of what that kit had wrong. Actually, they corrected everything that kid had wrong. It's got all the details. Let me see, get the glare out of the box. You can see the front gas gun, the rocket launchers, the rear gun, the set, the scanner, the uh, rear rocket launchers. Display with every gadget open or closed. It's got the brushes in the back, the brooms that uh, to erase your tire treads. I mean, it is a really good looking model the interior has all of the green hornet gadgets and even comes with the green hornet and kato i've been looking forward to this for a very long time and now it's finally here so we're going to be taking a good look at this kit on the channel all right the next thing we picked up was the porsche 911 turbo from 1988 figured since i built the fieros from 1988 Let's go right back to 1988 for this Porsche. I have a Cabriolet version of this car from Tamiya also. So I figured I would just pick up this uh, hardtop or coupe, which is very, very cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with an engine. This is a curbside kit. So in, in Tamiya fashion, it's going to be very easy to build and it's going to be a joy to detail and paint up. So this is going to be a fun, probably a really quick build, depending on how much, how, uh, well, how in-depth I get with the painting. This is going to be a fun one, though. Okay, keeping on the Porsche train, I picked up this 911 3.2 Carrera from Ravel. Now, I picked this up because I do have the Ravel of Germany version of this kit. And so I picked this one up, which is I thought was the American version of this kit, just to see what's different, since this is one of their latest kits. I also have the uh, Targa Top version of this. But I picked this up, and when I opened it up, I was sort of surprised. Revell of Germany, their kits have some amazing uh, instruction manuals, which is one of the things, one of the reasons I really wanted to get an actual Revell of Germany kit. Because I never built one. I have I have never built one. And I always wanted to see what the instruction manuals were like. But I picked this one up. Which I thought. Was a Ravel USA kit. And it winds up that it is. A Ravel of Germany kit. Because it's got their really great. Full color instruction manual. And they're very detailed. And I really really love the layout and the way that they do their instructions so I'm really looking forward to building this just so I can use this manual I mean this is really a step above this simple black and white instructions that every other kit uses and I was just pleasantly surprised to find that this kit actually has that manual in it 
as this is in the American style box. The uh, Reveal of Germany boxes are those flat boxes that never seem to fit right anywhere. And from what I've seen on the German version and this, ver well, the other box version and this one, they're pretty much identical. So it's pretty cool that Revell, either they've standardized their instructions so that they're using the same manuals in all their kits, all their newer kits, or somehow somebody made a mistake and put the German instructions in the American kit. I don't know. Uh, matter of fact, if you guys have built this kit, let me know if you've got those uh, really cool instructions. Because, uh, matter of fact, hold on just a second, guys. Okay, guys, here is my other 911 3.2 Coupe kit. So why don't we open this up and see if we have those same instructions that I've never opened this one. I got this one a while ago. I bought a second one because I really love Porsche, Porsche 911s, and you just really can't build enough of them. Same way I like building multiple Fieros. You can never get enough of building Porsche 911s. So, let's open this one. Let's see what's in here. Okay, it's basically the exact same thing, which is exactly what we would expect. And the instruction manual is... Drum roll, please. Yep, it's the same full color instruction manual that came in the other one. So I guess they are putting that in the in all of their kits. Which is a pleasant surprise because every Revell kit that I've ever built up until this point uses the old black and white instructions. So that's pretty cool. It's interesting little bit of info there. Oh, I'm very happy with it. And now I can build two of these Porsches. I we have to switch location because now we're going to be moving on to some slightly bigger kits. And Maddox, the model pup, decided he's going to join us. And uh, he'll be dis debuting these kits on the channel. Right, little dude? Yeah. Mm, okay, I can see you're really interested. Okay, yeah. So let's bring him out here and uh, before he gets totally bored. The first thing we're going to bring out, this is something that I've been waiting for for a while. Boom! Look at that little guy. What we have here is the Studio Series TIE Fighter. This is... An amazing kit, fully detailed, has everything you could ever want in a TIE Fighter, including a TIE Fighter pilot. Very, very cool. Right, little man? What do you think? No? You're more like an X-Wing kind of puppy? All right, no problem. But uh, this is an amazing kit. It's fully detailed inside and out. This is definitely going to be something I'm really looking forward to building on the channel. All right, let's keep it moving. Okay, now we're going to keep it going on the sci-fi bit. We already did cars. Now we're into my other favorite subject matter. And here is the next kit we're going to look at. Bow! Look at that. That is a 148th scale Gundam RX-78. Oh, see? Little man is really impressed with that. Look at him look at it. Wow. You love the, uh, you love the Gundams, don't you, little guy? This is a giant sized Gundam 148 scale. This is going to be a great build to kind of get me ready for my uh, Gundam Unleashed. We're going to start we're going to start easy and build our way up to that. But this is a very cool kit, fully detailed, tons of weapons and features. Going to be great on the channel. All right. Now, as you guys know, I went to Comic-Con back in October. And guess what I found at Comic-Con? Scale models. So, uh, we're going to break into some of what I picked up at Comic-Con. And uh, it's going to follow along the same subject matter. More Gundams. Here we're going to pick it up. We're looking at some Gundam Base exclusives. Now, Gundam Base is a store that they had set up at Comic-Con. And these are kits that are only sold at Gundam Base. Gundam Base is... It's actually a... Uh, 
a facility in Japan that is told, that is set up by Bandai. It's all geared toward Gundam, and they actually have a life-size Gundam there, which does a uh, little presentation where it moves, it, get, it kneels down, stands up. Really, really cool. Maybe I'll put a little bit of a video of it right about uh, here. Sure, why not? Take a look, guys. Okay, now tell me that was not cool. Uh, now what I got was a Gundam Base Limited Blue Destiny. This is made in a metallic style of plastic, which is very, very interesting. I've never seen that before. So that's going to be an interesting build there. And here we have the Gundam Base Limited White Base Hanger Set, which is very cool. It's a uh, Gundam... The Gundam mobile seat suits are in their hangers, and uh, and it just looks like they're being prepped for battle. So that's, that's going to make a cool little diorama. I think there's three of them in there. So these are some cool Gundam base exclusives. Right, little man? How cool are they? You know they're cool. You know they are. He's just trying, you know, not to look, not to uh, show you guys how excited he is by this. But those are very cool. And... Those are again were Comic Con from Comic Con. Now we're gonna keep going and show you what else we got from our time at the con. Okay, guys, these are two larger scale Gundams, and these are what they call their clear kits, which is basically the armor is all clear, so you can see the inner workings of the Gundam. They are very cool. They had them all set up there at Comic Con, and if you can see them if you go back and watch my Comic-Con videos. Uh, but they're very cool kits where you have all the mechanical inners. And then the outer shell, the armor, is all transparent. So, those are going to be very cool. One is a Shiki and the other one is a Zabu. So, if you're into uh, Gundam, you're going to really want to see uh, when I get around to building these. Alright, let's keep going with our Comic-Con stash. <laughs> Here we have another Gundam base exclusive. This is the painting model. Now, if you all, as you all know, if you're familiar with Bandai and the way that they make their kits, they're all molded in the colors they need to be to build the model straight out of the box. And it's a really interesting way they, they have their runners. All the different colors are on, are on one sprue. It's really cool. Well, it's, it's something a little bit different. This is another Gundam base exclusive where this model is completely white. So it's ready for you to paint in whatever scheme you want. So you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. It's an interesting model. It's a very simple build. I've actually built this kit on the channel and I made one chrome and one in what I call the real anime style. Um... And it's a really cool, really fun kit to build. But the fact that it's all white to let you just use your man imagination to color it any way you want. That's a really interesting uh, way for Bandai to bring our bring a newer Gundam modeler into the fold and allowing them just to do whatever they want. Whatever their imagination just comes up with. It's a great idea, I thought. So uh, I'm going to try and I'm going to do... I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm going to do something cool with it. Okay, guys. Here I've picked up two more smaller Gundams. Another one of the painting models, as I think it's going to be a lot of fun just to do something crazy with that. And then I picked up this one, which is really, really cool. This is another gundam base limited model, which is a debris part set. So you can set up a diorama with your Gundam with all sorts of debris behind it as if he's just gone through a battle and this is what the remains of whatever it was that he was fighting on or for or against. And uh, that's going to make a pretty nice uh, display. So that's going to be very cool. So every year when I go to Comic-Con 
and I go to the Gundam base, I always say I'm going to come back with something really spectacular. At least one really spectacular thing. Uh, not that none of, I mean, all of these things are really fantastic. But one that really is just an amazing uh, kit. And this year was no different. So this is what I came back with. Look out, little guy. It's coming in. It's coming in. Oh, that got his attention, didn't it? Look at the size of that. Another Gundam base exclusive. Let's uh, pull back on the camera just to let you guys see this whole thing. That is amazing. Wow. This is a Gigantosaurus kit. And look at that. It is so big. He's got to check out the whole thing. Okay, little guy. Does that have your seal of approval? Yep, look at that. He liked that kit so much he had to move to the other side of it. But look at the size of this thing. It is huge. And look at the weapons load out on this thing. Look at that gun. I mean, this is my hand on the box. Oh, and he's coming back for more. It is a huge kit. And definitely something that... I needed to pick up the minute I saw it. They had one that was built there at the show, which is really interesting. At Gun when they set up the Gundam base, every one of the kits there, they have a built version of that kit in their display area. So you can see what you're going to get. It's a really great idea. But this thing is huge. I mean, look at the size of this box. Take a look at some of what this kit is all about. Can you see that there? Look at the Gundam. Look at the armor. This is going to be an amazing build. Here goes some of the weapons that are involved with the kit. That's him all built up. Again, it's another amazing Gundam base exclusive. That just blew me away when I saw it. So I had to pick one up. Now, another really cool thing that uh, you get when you shop at the Gundam base at uh, Comic-Con is this really cool bag. The Gundam base pop-up store. This bag here is really neat. It's got the Gundam base emblem here, Gundam base pop-up on this side, and then on the other side, it's got a really cool bit of artwork showing all of the Gundam models or a whole bunch of them, not all of them, because it's way too many to put on one bag. But it's a pretty cool bag. And then they give you this cool little keychain thing that shows a Gundam model on the screws. This is actually pretty neat. This is actually one of their kits, which is a deformed cartoony version of it, which is uh, looks kind of silly, but it's cool. And you can scan that there. I don't know if you guys can scan it on the screen there and... Learn more about the, the whole Gundam universe. Okay, guys. Now, as for the next projects on the channel, we're going to do some interesting stuff here. The first thing we're going to do, I've shown this kit before when I did uh, one of my previous Stash Chat videos. This is the car that Mrs. Onyx models says that Mrs. Onyx Fiero. Onyx Fiero. Yes, yeah, she's Onyx Fiero on this channel. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Alex Fierro said was her dream car back in the 80s when she saw one going down the street and she loved the car. And I already told you the story about how I've been looking for the, for a model of the particular car and I bought her a couple of uh, promo models. It's all the same car, but she says they're all different. And until she saw this one, she said I didn't find the right one. I don't understand it, but hey, whatever it takes to make her happy. So we're going to be building this one, so I'm going to have to have her search her memory banks for recollections of exactly how she saw this car. It's going to be a little tough because it was all the way back in the 80s when she saw it and when she fell in love with it. And even though we're a Pontiac family, yeah, we'll allow one Chevy. Now, so that's going to be the next build coming up on the channel. But wait, there's more. We're not going to be doing one build. We did two builds, three builds the last time. 
which drove me crazy. So I figured, let me make myself totally nuts again and do two builds at the same time, completely unrelated, just uh, because. This is the Pontiac GTO 2-in-1. Now, I actually started this car a long time ago. It's my first, I think, successful fully airbrushed body for a car. As a matter of fact, let me go show you guys the body in case you haven't seen the video. There is an actual beginning to this build series, which I did sometime last year, and I just never got back to it. So let me show you guys what it looks like. Okay, this is the body. Now, this was a car that I had to paint several times because I kept screwing it up. And I finally got it to come out pretty decent. And then I figured, let me try these 20 plus year old decals and see if they'll actually lay down right. And they, uh, they actually came out pretty good. So this car was just a big exercise in seeing if I can actually do it. So, so far it looks, it's coming out pretty good. I like the way the body came out. Took a lot of sanding to fix all of the errors in the paint. If you guys want to go back and check out the video on the Monogram 64 GTO, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll put a link in this video to it. So you guys can get a refresher on what this build is going to be about. But uh, I did a lot of sanding, a nice heavy coat of clear, and I managed to actually save the paint job on this. I didn't think I'd be able to, but I did. Um, and nobody's more surprised than me because I had pretty much given up on it. And uh, I applied the decals and the decals I got lucky with because I really didn't think that they were going to work. But they did for the most part. They're not perfect, but they're going to look good as a for a shelf display model. And so I'm really happy with the way it came out. So I figure we're going to continue that. And since this is blue and she wants a blue Camaro, we're just going to make a blue build for the next projects on the channel. So, um... That's pretty much it, guys. That is the update. As far as I know, I think that's everything we got for now. I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting. But anyway, come back, join us on the channel. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when everything gets started here on the channel. Because I don't even know when it's going to happen, but at least you guys will. And um, join back. As we finish up all the detailing on this and get started on these two as our next builds. And then we're going full on sci-fi, guys. Done a lot of cars. Now I need to do some sci-fi. And we got a lot of stuff. Oh, wait, there is some more stuff. And we'll do that on another Stash Ad video. All right, guys, that's going to be it. I will see you on the next one. And BG, let me know what you think about all these Gundams. Because I know you're an anime guy just like me. All right, guys. The little man is calling me, and, uh, you know, he's the boss. So I'll see you on the next one.